I'm speaking to you from the Buell Planetarium Theater of the Stars, where we're going to have a demonstration of the Zeiss Planetarium Projector from Mr. Arthur Draper, who is Director of Planetarium Programs. I guess I should start off, Mr. Draper, by asking you what is the Zeiss Planetarium Projector? Well, it's uh, simply, I shouldn't say simply, it's a very complicated thing. A uh, projection device to reproduce the heavens as seen with a naked eye, or in some cases we go beyond that and see things as they appear telescopically too. And I guess my next question should be, where is it? The projector. It's right <laughs> in the middle of the theater of the stars here, and uh, just to my right, uh, and out of sight. That's what you're talking about, of course, <laughs> because it, it, we have it mounted on an elevator. Oh. We're quite uh, proud of that because this is the only uh, light projector in the country or in the world that has an elevator, which is a very useful thing. Mm -hmm. There is one other, I might say, I won't tell you where, that has an elevator, but it doesn't work. Oh. <laughs> Ours works. I see. Uh, we can bring this up then, I guess, and uh, have an explanation of what it does. Very good. Uh, Roy over there at the controls, would you uh, bring it up on its uh, Westinghouse elevator? As I remember from the uh, sky shows, this makes a very impressive entry at some time, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, we bring it up in the dust usually, and with, with uh, rather dramatic music quite frequently, and it uh, gives you quite a charge sometimes. Well, uh, there are a great many lenses I see here. I guess as it gets up farther, you can tell us what, the, what it is and how it works as far as that is concerned. Actually, there are about a hundred different projectors, and of course that means a great many more lenses than a hundred. We have the two ends. Are they identical in, uh, in projection? They're identical in the sense that they are symmetrical, but uh, the stars they project and the other effects they project are quite different. Because, uh, just for example, Ray, this large globe, is what we call the star globe. It has in it 16 small projectors to give us the stars of the southern hemisphere of the sky. And uh, the other corresponding globe at the top gives us the stars of the northern hemisphere. So the two go together, and if you didn't have both of them, you wouldn't have a planetary. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you can set these, I understand, for different times of the year and even different years. Yes, uh, any time of day or night for any day for any year uh, within reason, and I mean by that, uh, I'm sure you'll be reasonable. 50,000 <laughs> years in the past, 50,000 years in the future. How, how do you do that? How does it work in that respect? Well, there are several points involved there, but of course you work it by remote control, where our technician Roy is right now. Uh, here's one example, Ray. The planet projectors are mounted separately in these cages, the main axis. Uh, there are two projectors for each planet, so that if one gets behind the strut, the other one is still projecting. Mm. You can never lose planets here. But uh, uh, since the planets move, as you know, uh, the real planets, at different speeds, we have to have these go at different speeds, so they're all geared together. And with the remote control there at the console, uh, we just start them running for 1963 or 1973 and run them until we Could get the we right see date. how that goes now? Uh, yes, would you run the uh, annual motion there, Roy? And I think you can see these small projectors oh, yeah. turning now. Uh, they would turn independent from the, uh, what, daily motion? From the daily motion or the latitude motion. They're quite independent. And as a matter of fact, you can have the daily going on with the annual motion of the planet going on, too. Perhaps you'd like to uh, try that, uh, uh, Roy. Put the daily motion on. We'll see how the star globe moves as well as the planet projectors. And here's the Milky Way projector, which of course moves uh, with the whole unit. Now, I noticed that when you watch the sky shows, that if the stars get down to the horizon, they, they cut off. They don't come down and show on the audience. Oh, yes. <laughs> like yes. And uh, that is simply because each of these star projectors has a weight attached to it, which uh, by gravity closes an eyelid to cover the lens and uh, cut the stars off at the horizon. Uh, then you have uh, how many stars again to go back? How many do you project? 9,000, which is every star, of course, that you can see with the unaided eye on a very clear night through the entire year. 
and you can duplicate any period with uh, reasonable accuracy, I understand. With very extreme accuracy, <laughs> if you please. <laughs> right, yeah. We can go back, for example, 50,000 years, 40,000, something like that, and I imagine the positions of the planets would not be off by more than one degree oh. of arc, which is very... Uh, one other motion, Ray. Could I sure. show you one more? Uh, you want to stop the uh, daily, Roy, the annual, and uh, put on the latitude motion. Now the whole machine, as you see, uh, pivots on the horizontal axis, and we can travel this way, not only in time, but uh, in latitude, going north and south. Thank you very much, Mr. Draper. Time is very important, even here on television. So let's see now where the magic carpet will take us next.